Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sandy Allnock. I'm an artist. I work in the Pacific Northwest and I work in a lot of different mediums on all sorts of projects in all sorts of styles. I love everything from graphite pencil to pen and ink to watercolors, markers, colored pencils, pastels, gouache, pretty much all the things. I love making art and I love teaching as well and sharing the crumbs of information that I know with others on the journey as well. I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. And maybe after this video, you'll decide that this is a community you want to be part of. And I welcome you here, no matter your level of experience from beginner to advanced or anywhere in between. Today, I want to discuss a topic that I have not as of yet, which is AI, artificial intelligence. When it first came out, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a flash in the pan or if it was really going to take things over, and apparently it's the latter. Just last week, I thought I was having a customer service interaction with a company, and apparently I was talking to an AI bot that didn't want to answer my questions, so I had to pick up the phone and find a human to talk to. But I'm not going to talk about those general life consequences of AI taking over. I want to discuss how it interacts with art. I've spoken with a number of artists, some of whom have greeted AI with a side eye of interest and curiosity and others with outright hostility. I fall a little somewhere in between them. But I want to share with you my perspective, some things that I've learned, some things that I'm doing to combat the technologification of our art world, and ways that you can also choose your fighter in the battle against AI and the fight for original art. So let's get started with that discussion while I work on a piece of art that reflects this topic. I'll show you the pen and ink in real time and then a colored version of it in speed format. So let's get going. As an artist for over 40 years, it's been a little astonishing to watch how fast AI has taken over our world in the last few years. As a Trekkie since childhood, I always knew computers were going to take over more tasks for us one day. But I never really thought it was going to try to take away the fun things. I mean, it would be awesome if AI could just go do the laundry and fold it and put it away when it's done so I'd have more time to make more art. Instead, the technology is trying to make the art instead of me so that, what, I can have more time to do laundry? That seems a little crazy and upside down from my Star Trek vision of my childhood. In my youth, I wanted to become an art teacher to help others express the creativity built into them. For some people, drawing or painting is our creativity, coming out with a finished work of art. For others, it's sewing or gardening or writing or fixing cars. They're all creative things. One of the most creative people I ever knew was a project manager who could look at the data about an ad campaign and give me insights that I could never have found myself. And that creative ingenuity with data blew me away. Well, since that's how I think about creativity, you might consider me someone who should love that quote unquote, everyone can just order up some AI and come out with an image. Well, that's not the case. If AI is the only way you can turn your creative vision into imagery, then you're probably not built to be an artist or an illustrator. You're built to be, say, a creative director or a client. You have a vision and you can tell an artist who already knows how to draw and paint what to create and how to do that in a style that fits your vision. And that's what happens when you're using an AI model and making AI imagery. Think of it like going into a restaurant and placing a special order. You give the kitchen directions for how much spices to add, for how long to cook it, to add in a special ingredient. When the plate is brought out, you just declare, aren't I a great chef? No, the person in the kitchen is the chef. You gave them the directions. And it is a creative partnership 
but you are not the chef. Just like if you created an AI image, you are not the artist. So is AI art? I do have an artist friend who built an AI model just for himself on only his own drawings. He trained it so that he could make his drawings come alive in animations, and it is insanely cool. I don't have anything against any kind of computer artwork. If that's what you do, that's great. I'm talking specifically about using the AI models, the systems that have been built that a lot of people are using. It's based on the art of others that have been trained into the system. And I consider that original art to have been stolen. It was scraped by technology to feed into their system with no compensation to the artist, no credit for their work. Creative writing is part of the AI process, but since there were no artistic tools applied by hand to make the imagery happen, I don't consider imagery generated by that system to be art. AI is a creative venture, but it's a creative writing venture, not art. I believe everyone can be creative, but not everyone is destined to produce images that can be called art. Now, a stroll into the art community discussions out there will show you that AI poses obvious real danger to the art field. Absolutely. And it's already having its effects. Everything from book covers to ads, that people are using AI generated imagery all over the place. And that means less art jobs for illustrators, for artists. AI also poses what I consider to be even a greater danger to art. And that is to the reputation of what it is to be an artist. While my mission in life is to take away the mystery of creating by teaching people how to draw and how to paint, my goal has never cheapened the hard work and practice that artists have to put in. When AI makes it easy to quote unquote type up a drawing, AI does what an old boss of mine did at a corporate job that I once worked at. He actually said to me one day that I should be able to get a particular project done by the end of the day. And he said this, quote, you can just poop that right out and have it on my desk by five. Well, I can report to you that I did not poop out anything. And I did not put up with that kind of disrespect of my work. And shortly thereafter, I quit that job. So to those who think that I am gatekeeping, who can be an artist, please know that I am delighted for anyone to become an artist. Art's not easy, but I would love for you to learn to draw and paint to your heart's content and achieve all you can possibly accomplish. But should we allow someone in a different field, let's talk about a different area, allow someone to become an Olympic diver without actually being a diver. You know, someone who didn't do years worth of training their body, they didn't go to 4 a.m. practices to learn all the diving moves and the flips. They didn't go to state and national competitions to win a spot on their Olympic team. They just got a hold of an Olympic athletic uniform and they showed up in Paris or Los Angeles and they demanded to carry a torch. No, that defeats the whole idea of being an Olympian. It's the culmination of a lifetime of work and dedication, and yes, gifts as well, and then they become that Olympiad. Becoming an artist is something that's on a spectrum. We're all at one stage or another of it. Now, some are brand new with a whole art career ahead of them, and they learn by studying and copying and practicing all the way up to those who are striving to grow and create original works with goals of selling their art. Everybody on this spectrum can call themselves an artist no matter where they are. You don't have to be at a particular level. But there's one thing you do have to be. You have to be somebody who makes things. Not just types words so that an image appears. You gotta make the things yourself to be called an artist. I'm actually not living in terror of AI stealing my work. First off, everything that I've already had online has probably already been captured. It's already been scraped from the web. So I'm not taking down my website. I am not going to make all my social accounts private. All of that is already gone. It's just the way it is. And I know it's heartbreaking for a lot of people, but it is what it is. 
Secondly, I have also decided to believe, whether it's true or not, that I'm not important enough for anybody to try to enter an AI prompt saying, AI, draw me a doodle in Sandy Alnock style so I can pretend I'm her. I mean, honestly, they'd have to know who I am first, which not many do. An AI would have to work out how to mimic my wonky pen and ink work or my crazy watercolor style. So I don't know that I'm really a target of that. I don't suspect that artists are going to take down AI anytime soon. More on that in just a moment. But I've got a few things I'm doing as my own way of fighting back against AI. And some of these may or may not work in the long run. Number one, my art is not consistent. I am using different mediums all the time. I am using different styles. And my work is not always recognizable because I'm always trying something different. I do feel bad for well-known artists whose work is famous enough and consistent enough that AI will find it easy to mimic. There's a painter who paints foggy beach scenes in oil paint over and over and over again, just changes the colors and a little location of waves. It's very easy for someone to say to AI, hey, paint me a foggy beach scene like this artist in these colors. And that might be fairly easy for a computer to do, but not so much my work. Number two, I will keep in the handmade elements. I've never worried about pencil lines showing through my watercolors, but I'm learning to embrace it even more and letting my imperfections in pen and ink work and other mediums remain imperfect. Anything that makes my art clearly made by a human is something I plan to celebrate, not trying to make my work look like a machine spit it out. Number three, I'm going to keep photographing my work from an angle. Because from someone with experience, I learned that not having the art pieces straight on at least makes it harder for AI to scrape and capture an image and use it in any kind of a decent way. I suspect a computer will be able to adapt that soon if it hasn't already worked it out, though. So who knows? And number four, I'm going to be making a lot of art. We need more people to see what actual art looks like in a world swimming in AI imagery. I can easily tell when something's been generated by AI, but so many cannot. They actually believe that an image of a ridiculous famous person riding a lion is a real painting. And we've got to figure out how to train more people to know when they're seeing real art versus fake works. And by putting out a lot of work, we at least try to flood the zone with something that's real. This last one I'm not doing myself, but I'll include it anyway. Some people are worried enough about their art that they go to the lengths of applying a poison app to protect their photos. Something like Nightshade. Now, Nightshade adds changes to the pixels in a digital image that are invisible to the human eye. But these modifications put a kink in the works when AI relies on your art. So it gums things up. Now, Nightshade takes a lot of memory and I'm not in a position to test it out with enough time or computer power on my old machine. But if you've got experience with Nightshade or other of those apps, please do leave comments and I'll pin the most helpful ones. Now for a little hope. The AI-generated images trend is one that I do believe will fade. I find the images to be too blendy-blendy. Much of it looks like it was created for a CGI movie. And I find the overall look to be vapid, absent of the humanity that an artist puts into their work. Not to mention that AI can't seem to count fingers or get a grasp on perspective, or even count how many arms there should be in a group of people. To the untrained public eye, AI imagery can seem exciting because we're trained to like CGI movies. But I don't believe that's going to last. I think artists are going to regain respect again as AI imagery becomes boring because it's all created by a machine. If you want to join the fight, then choose your own fighter in your own ways. Here is my recommendation. 
make uniqueness your goal. Art that no computer would ever even think up. Being uniquely you entails letting go of what you think others want to see. That's just going to fit you into their model. Celebrate what you do. Your style, the way you apply marks on paper, the way you choose and use your colors. It takes time to find out what all those things are for you. But you will find them in time as you practice. It's taken me decades to get to the hot mess where I am, and I still struggle regularly. I share my journey here on YouTube in hopes that it'll encourage you on yours. And I'm encouraged by comments from the community back in return. I'd love to have more conversations with you on topics like this, as well as things more related to specifically creating your artwork, like value and color and perspective and shading and drawing and all of the things. So if you have ideas for topics you'd like me to cover, please do leave those in comments. What are your thoughts about AI? Are you afraid of it? Does it make you nervous? Do you give it the side eye of curiosity? Or have you tried it out yourself? I'd love to know your experience, especially if you're someone who has used some of those poison apps, the nightshade, etc. I'd like to know how that's working for you. What does it take to get into it? I want to learn more. So please do leave me comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. And there are links in the doobly-doo or the description down below this video so you can download this drawing and color it up yourself. And you could also check out my classes and see if there's something of interest to you on topics, mediums, or subject matter that you'd like to learn. I will see you again in my next video. They come up every Tuesday and Saturday. Do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up before you head out the door and I'll see you again next time. Go create something every day.